I'm going to go to Frank. Frank in Illinois, an atheist, pronouns he, him, uh, has questions for us, and we'll do our best to not suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. Um, my, I, I watch you guys all the time. I've considered myself an atheist or a skeptic for, I don't know, a couple of years. I haven't really um, come out to my family, and I have a very big uh, immediate family. Uh, I'm the youngest of nine, but, uh, my, my question is, um, there's going to be a get together between the family that is still alive in a couple of months. And I've got a brother that is, I like to call him a Catholic on steroids. He is also a QAnon, uh, conspiracist. He, there's no conspiracy that. He uh, does not uh, subscribe to. Now, I have another brother who uh, is evangelical who absolutely hates the uh, Catholic uh, religion. And uh, if we get all of us in the room together, I don't know how to... I, I feel like I'm going to have to be the voice of reason. Um, and I don't know how to do it without being argumentative um but i i would like some advice on how to handle the two sides and then insert my side of all religion is bullshit without saying all religion is bullshit if if, if i'm making any sense to you uh matt if you don't mind i want to I, I just want to go first because i have two citations to offer um nope. And then, so the two, I just want to put this at the beginning is anybody with a clip might be figuring out two really great resources for what you're describing. I can't find the clip, but John Oliver actually had a video about how to change somebody's mind. Uh, and I don't remember what it was called. So you might have to do some Googling to find it, but it was excellent. But the second one that I found really good, there's a book by Stephen Hassan. He's the guy who developed the bite model, uh, talks about cults and stuff. He's not perfect. He's, it's like a lot of people that we've uh, uh, talked about, a lot of different people we recommend books from who are kind of shitty on some issues. But as far as the bite model and cult stuff goes, it's great. The book is called The Cult of Trump, and I think it's ch it's either chapter 9 or chapter 11, but I think it's chapter 11 is after all of these chapters about the different ways uh, uh, the, the – diehard Trump people resemble a cult and talking about all that stuff. He dedicates a chapter to basically like, if you feel like it's hopeless, here's how to have conversations with those people. And it is excellent. It is a really, really good, uh, I might pull it up on my Kindle and see if I can verify the chapter while Matt talks about it. But um, those are two resources that I highly, highly recommend. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I don't know that I, I have a whole lot to add to it because for me, the first thing that kind of crops up is how much do you really want to engage on these topics? Is, is it essential that you even have the discussion about those things? You know, you're like, oh, how do I fix what's wrong in my family? Fuck, if I knew there'd be nothing wrong in my family. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and it's like, despite the fact that I engage on these subjects on a regular basis, I don't really engage on these subjects with my family members that I've matter of fact, I didn't spend any time really with my family members, um, for the holidays this year. And it, it's, it's not that I wouldn't have the discussion. It's that we, we've reached a point where I'm not sure how any real progress is likely to be made. And un until I know how we're likely to make progress, it's kind of like when I was having the discussion earlier, if you don't know what methods are likely to produce effective results, I don't know how to, how to, uh, how to make a uh, decision about which methods to use. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, and I've also talked to a couple of. Uh, it seems it seems that the only rational people in my family are my sisters, 
and it's and we have talked about this. Are are we going to allow both of these um, huge egos in the same room because sparks are going to fly, and when they do fly, um, I guess what's the you know we're all discussing what's the best way to uh, tamp them out. You know, little fires here and there everywhere, but. Um, it, I, I, can, I think you're right. I think uh, there's no way that I'm going to keep the peace, either though. one of them that they're yeah. that they're wrong about their religion. If the if the I goal mean, is to I, keep I the peace, that if the goal is to keep the peace, then you point out you two are creating conflict. Neither one of you is able to present a uh, a valid argument supported by objectively verifiable evidence for your beliefs. There's a reason that you guys are both going to wind up relying on faith and both of you are going to deny if we can, we can come up with sources and you'll deny those sources. And this is a left-wing source, or this is a satanic source. And you can do this on, we've watched this happen over and over and over again. Can we just fucking get together as a family, set aside the things that we already know you believe that we don't share and focus on the things that we share and care about. Otherwise, why should I keep interacting? If, if you guys are going to be here to preach or try to, to convert or take over a family interaction and make it about you and your beliefs, then either you don't need to come or we're gonna stop coming. But if you can get along and say, you know what? The two of you can go off and argue whenever the fuck you want, but you only have this time to be with your family members. That's, that's as close as I can get to, to a keep the peace thing. I did find it. It's, chap I love it. it's chapter nine, and the uh, title of chapter nine is How to Undo Mind Control, which it's not magical mind control. The book is called The Cult of Trump. A leading cult expert explains how the president uses mind control, referring to in the bite model how two of the uh, thought and emotion control are two of the um, hallmarks of a cult. Uh, so chapter nine of that book. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And uh, thank you, Matt, for, uh, for your input too. Um, it's been sure. very helpful because I, I you know, I, I find myself, I, I can't, I, I cannot deal with bullshit. And that's what both sides, even though they're completely opposite, they're still complete bullshit, in my opinion. And if you guys don't mind, I would like to ask one more question. Yeah, real quick, it's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this, too, because I just checked. Uh, so I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, Spotify Premium recently added a shit ton of audiobooks. Uh, I've been re-listening to Polysecure because I'm polyamorous. It's a book about that. Anyway, I just checked. If you have Spotify Premium, The Cult of Trump is one of the books you can listen to for free. Uh, if you have premium, so I shouldn't say for free. If you have premium, uh, the cult of Trump is included on premium. So uh, now a way that lots of people, because I think I, it seems like most people have Spotify premium. I certainly do. Um, I don't even know what Spotify premium is. Yeah. For it, it used to just be Spotify without ads, but now it's podcast, audiobooks, and we're talking like good audiobooks, not not. Uh, uh, not like some of the other free uh, where it's like they're not making any money anyway anywhere else. So the, we're just dumping them on here services. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd let you know that, uh, Frank, in case you have Spotify Premium, that book that I recommended is actually on there. I do have it, and thank you for that. Uh, I will definitely check into it. Cool. Can I ask one more question? Yep, go for it. Off topic. Okay. I've, I've heard you guys talk about uh, numbers five. And it, and it piqued my interest, and I had to look it up for myself. And it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away that that is really something that people buy into. And I think it's an argument that, to me, is definitive that it's the, the Bible itself is bullshit. But I've heard you guys say it's not a definitive argument. Can you kind of explain that, or or am I even wrong about that, your opinion? I don't know that I'm one of the people who've made this argument. You're well, not one of the people? Okay, so you, you think it's a, 
a definitive thing to say, this is absolute bullshit. I mean, am, am I right in saying that? I, I don't want to put words no, in I, mouth, I, I but... think I don't have a numbers five specific argument to affirm or deny the reality of the Bible. Matt, do you? No, and, and I don't know if I recall numbers five off the top of my head. It's the one about telling Moses to uh, take everybody out of camp who has an infection. <laughs> that's that's all I know from well, Numbers 5. It's uh, The one I remember is more detailed than that. It's about if, if a woman is unfaithful, uh, bring this woman to to the uh, priest oh, the, or whatever. You're talking about the one that people bring up to say that the about Bible a, endorses abortion. abortion. And I don't think that yeah. it proves that the Bible endorses abortion at all. No. Can you can you say why you don't believe that? Because that's so. Even if so, the specifics of that are: if you suspect that your wife has been unfaithful, you do this. So there's a criteria there under which you put them under under basically God's judgment and God will decide what ends up happening. This has nothing to do with I'm pregnant and do not wish to be. Yeah, it, it's it's more ritualistic. It just happened to be the case that it may have induced uh, miscarriages, but that wasn't their intention with it but at all. It, it absolutely. No, no, this is absolutely. They're giving them, this is a recipe for an abortifacient, but the Bible doesn't say, here's a recipe for how you can terminate your pregnancies. That's not what this is. Yeah. And in their ritual, unless I'm wrong, in the ritual, it was only supposed to work. So again, they don't know that it's an abortion medicine because they think it's a medicine that will, it's only going to work if she was unfaithful, correct? It doesn't work if it, if it turns out she wasn't. Can I yeah. uh, put some input into that? Go for it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, don't people, religious people, Christians in general, say that the gift of life is the best gift that God has ever given. And I don't know. If that, that is I don't know. I don't know who says that or how it's relevant. Right. And, and the answer would be some, but a God, the Bible is full of God killing babies. So let's not, they, clearly they have ways to work around that, that when it comes to God, God is allowed to decide. Remember, more uh, more zygotes and more embryos never make it to term than do make it to term. In fact, I think it's so many zygotes that it's more people never even are aware that they are pregnant than the number of babies uh, that they were very briefly pregnant than the number of babies who are born each year. So this, God commits the most abortions of all. And, and this is an example yeah, of that. that. This is an example of that because the, the, the numbers five thing about adultery is if you suspect that your wife's been fucking around, then you do this. Yeah. And if she has been, God will kill her baby. And if she hasn't been, then she will conceive. This is not at all, this has nothing to do with abortion. It, it is not about somebody's pregnant and wants to terminate at all. Right. Um, what it is, is in the same way that, you know, Onan, uh, was commanded to have sex with his dead brother's wife. And when he would have sex with her, he would pull out and spill his seed on the ground. Um, he wasn't punished for masturbation, which is what some people tried to spin it as, and he wasn't punished for spilling his seed on the ground. It's not spilling your seed on the ground that is the sinful part of it. It is not masturbation that is the, the sinful part of it. It was disobedience to God. God said, knock your brother's wife up. And Onan said, well, I'll go through the motions, but I'm not actually going to do it. And so when you try to spin it as if it's opposed to masturbation or if it's opposed to the rhythm method or whatever else, yeah. you're ignoring what the book's actually about. And this passage about adultery is about, hey, I think my wife went and had sex with somebody else. And, and at that time, you didn't have paternity tests. And you didn't want to be cuckolded and you didn't want to have to raise somebody else's bastard. And so you went through these steps and virtually 
the, the, the real travesty here is that this recipe is almost always going to cause an abortion, which means whether that woman had sex with somebody else or not, she will then be treated as an adulteress. Yeah. That's the travesty here. Frank, can, can you wonderful. at least acknowledge, so regardless of if you want to get sort of pedantic about the fact that it, an abortion is occurring in the Bible, can you acknowledge that it absolutely nowhere in that verse or in those verses, it is not granting autonomy to women. In fact, it is taking autonomy away from women. Yeah. It, it, the whole thing is oh, because yeah. she's proper. I agree. And so it's hard to say, see, here's biblical proof that God's down with abortion when the political position, pro-choice position, is autonomy granting. Whereas, yeah. what, what if all the Christians agree with you and then go, you know what? You're right. So from now on, here's how we will decide which women get abortions. That would be just as bad, potentially worse than, than no abortions for anybody. We will fascistically rule on who, who must abort and whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, it's not a verse that you should, anyone should consider progressive. And then my last point to you, Frank, before we move on is let's just say it did say that kind of in the same way that I don't call myself a Satanist, like we talked about the other day, but, but I like Satanists and I like a lot of what the Satanist temple does. Even if it did say God is fine with women having autonomy and abortion and, and, uh, of uh, getting abortions. Yes, you could use that to point out hypocrisy, but I would not make that the foundation of any pro-choice argument because I would keep religion completely out of it. And so that's why I, I, regardless, again, I'm only going to attack hypocrisy when it comes to the religion. I'm not going to say like, oh, I don't do it with queer stuff, even though there is stuff in the Bible uh, and, and stuff that people who we know who are scholars and researchers are like, actually, these different things in here where it's about homosexuality or whatever, the original context is actually this and this. I don't even bother with that shit. I should be allowed to be gay because I live in America where there's separation of church and state. You can't force me to join your religion. You can't force me to practice your religion. I'm not going to try to win them over on the doctrine when at the end of the day, they're just going with what makes them feel bad and icky is what God's will is for the entire universe because it's in their little book. I, it's, it's not a useful way to engage, I don't think. That's why I love the show because you guys just explain things, things so carefully, so to the point, and make me reconsider my arguments. And that's, that's just why I love the show. And I, I thank you for Thanks, taking Frank. my call. And, um, I, uh, I'll let you get onto some other callers, but, um, I do appreciate you, uh, entertaining my thoughts and, uh, giving me good advice. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Cool. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer for The Line and avid candy eater. Hey, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so now on Patreon or as a channel member with tiers specific to supporting specific shows and hosts. And it also supports our ability to expand programming going forward. You could also leave a super thanks down below, get a little special highlighted comment. And I'll tell you what, you could hit like and you could hit subscribe. Now, here are some video suggestions so we can fudge that algorithm. Go with one of ours. Forget everyone else on YouTube. I'm begging. <laughs>